Matt Tal, founder and CEO of MT Ventures, LLC. Today we're going to take a little trip into the game of golf. It's a game that's frustrated millions of people for hundreds of years. For years people have consulted with training aides, golf professionals, and magazines with hopes of shaving a few strokes off their game. Today we're going to take a very simplistic look at the game from somebody who's played it a lot and see if we can come up with the best solutions for golfing problems. Golf is by far the most technically demanding sport in the world. Sometimes there is a quarter of an inch between the best and worst shot you have ever hit. The golf grip is one of the most gray areas in golf. Most teaching pros cover a variety of confusing techniques, such as the right hand making a V to point to the right shoulder, or a certain amount of knuckles being shown from a front view. We are going to throw all that out the window for now and introduce a simple solution to a correct golf grip. What I'm going to do is split my thumb in two with a line going directly down the middle of my thumb on my left hand. Then I'm going to place on the interior lifeline of my right hand another line that traces and outlines that lifeline. I'm now going to connect the two lines so they touch each other. This is the proper form of the hands on the club. I now am going to place my left hand down the center of the shaft and come over the top with my right hand in the same position with those two lines touching. We are now in good position to lower the club to the ball. There are two places in the swing setup where the body can bend, the hips and the knees, and exactly in that order. When standing over the ball, bend at the hips holding the club out in front of the chest until the club strikes the ground. Once the club strikes the ground, the knees may become slightly bent to make an athletic stance. This is also a great way to ensure proper distance from the golf ball. As I set up to the golf ball, take note of the golf ball positioned directly ahead of center. My head is positioned behind the golf ball and my weight is evenly distributed 50-50 between my right and left leg. As the club starts moving away from the ball, I focus on a one-piece takeaway. As the club reaches knee height, a parallel line should form from the club through the knees. My right shoulder should form a 90 degree angle with the club. Notice my left arm perfectly straight. As the back swing continues, body weight shifts to the back right leg and the club becomes loaded at the top position. As the left hip unwinds, the body weight moves aggressively into the left side and the golf club falls into the cock position. Now, an acute angle has formed between my right shoulder and the golf club. Once the weight has fully been transferred into the left side, the angle can be released into the impact zone. At impact, the body rotates on the firm left leg and the head maintains its behind the ball position. As we drive through the golf ball, Notice all the body weight has been transferred through the swing and the hands are still connected to the center of my chest. As the swing is finished, the center of my body faces my target. Throughout the swing, the hands in the middle of the chest stay connected from top to bottom and all the way through the finish. And last but not least, Keeping a good tempo is the key to solid golf shots. When hitting a flop shot, you want to choose the most lofted club in your bag, such as a lob wedge or a sand wedge. 
A flop shot requires you to open the face of the club flat and then regrip it. In a good flop shot, the weight of the body is almost totally on the left side. The weight remains on the left side throughout the entire shot. Then take notice to the exaggerated forward press of the hands ahead of the shaft. This forms an obtuse angle of my right arm and the club. This angle is maintained throughout the whole shot. On the takeaway, almost all body weight is maintained on the left side. And the forward shaft angle is also maintained on the takeaway. As the shoulders keep turning, the club is loaded at a three-quarter position with a firm left arm. Keep in mind, at the top position, body weight is still kept on the left side. This is to ensure a descending blow into the golf ball. As the shoulders fall into the downswing, the hips stay quiet and the arms stay straight through impact. Notice the obtuse angle of impact exactly as the setup. In a traditional flop shot, the wrists break after impact. I like to hold on to the angle to ensure that the loft of the club stays consistent. This technique ensures a consistent trajectory of a high and soft landing golf shot. Pitching is basically a half to three quarter swing with an abbreviated follow through. The ball position is just back of center and my stance is more narrow because it's a shorter swing motion. I try not to transfer much weight in the swing from back to front and focus more on a turn. This helps with impact and accuracy. I also make sure I keep my full swing tempo. When chipping the golf ball, there are two keys to consistency. One is placing all the body weight on the left leg. This ensures a descending blow. The other is a putting-like rocking of the shoulders with no wrist movement. Hold the angle and pinch the ball into the ground. In the sand bunker, the most important component to a good shot is balance. This is because impact is so precise. In order to maintain balance, I again focus on a turn rather than a weight transfer. This keeps my body quiet and my club rotating. Impact should be two inches behind the ball, but carving out a sand cushion between the club and the ball. When hitting a greenside bunker shot, try to hit the sand layer to the hole with the ball. This ensures good impact. When hitting a bunker shot on an incline, the same principles apply. The only variable is the degree of incline. In order to be successful on an incline, we must mimic the incline angle with our own shoulders. Again, balance is crucial. Concentrate on hitting a layer of sand to the hole with the ball. In traditional golf instruction, most professionals focus on a rocking of the shoulders, the ball being placed 8 inches inside the left heel, and our eyes over the ball. That is all very important, but I am going to talk about tempo and even distribution. When the putter is brought back to a certain length, it must have the identical follow-through length, regardless of its tempo. This is the only way to hit consistently accurate distances. The most important factor to putting well is following your instincts. Make a commitment to your putts. Once we pick a line and speed, do not be indecisive. One thing I do that helps me stay aggressive on the putting green is to draw not just a line, but an arrow. I place this arrow on my line, then make a commitment to speed. Once this has happened, there is no turning back. Trust your instincts. When lining up a putt, the biggest mistake amateurs make is they can't make a decision. 
They differ from what kind of break they want to play. They differ from what kind of line they want to take with the putt. My best advice to most amateurs and most professionals too is once we make a commitment, once we line up the putt, once we decide it on the break and speed, execute it. Once we line up to the golf ball and we know what kind of stroke we want to use and what line we want to have, we just want to stand over the putt and, and not really even look at the hole anymore. We don't want to be caught doing this. Once we have a line, we set the line. Once we have our stance, we set our stance. Once we know what stroke we want to use, make a commitment to the golf ball. People often ask me, how do you hit the ball further? The golf swing is powered by a coiling and an uncoiling of the body. When the body moves, the club is connected to the center. As we rotate on the back and we rotate to the forward, the most important variable is turning into a firm left side. We see this in all rotational sports. Baseball, for example, a baseball bat is back. A, a batter will take a step into the pitch, then turn into a rotation on the front side. Any rotational sport we see, tennis, you will see a rotation into the front side. A hockey slap shot, you will see a rotation into the front side. Golf is no different. When we set up to the golf ball, we make sure our head and body are behind the ball. The two secrets to rotational power is extension, being that I have extension from the body, coiling on the back side, and from here, we transfer weight into the front of the left leg. Once the weight reaches the left leg, we extend the left leg into a firm left side. And once we have our body weight distributed forward on the left side, we can now uncoil the body into the golf ball. Coming back, transferring back, 70-30 at the top into a full 95 to 5% at the bottom. Once weight is embraced on the left side, we now are free to drive through the golf ball. In baseball, the front anchor is planted with a step. The key to rotational power is an anchor acting as a post to turn on. In golf, the post is already planted, but has to be activated by a transfer of weight from back to right leg into a firm post of the left leg. So in order to hit the golf ball further, we want to think about three key components. One, getting further extension from the ball. Two, maintaining flexibility through the back of the turn. And three, most important, getting the weight firmly braced on the left side before impact. Over the years, the golf swing has been made a very complicated move by many people. We talk about weight transfer, we talk about coiling and uncoiling of the body, we talk about grip, stance, relation to the ball, body. We're going to throw all that out the window and focus on three basic drills that are going to help you make better contact with the ball, hit your golf shots online, and get the ball close to the pin. Drill number one, people often ask me, what is the relationship of the club to the body? Well, the golf swing is basically a connection of the right side to the left hip. We know that, okay? The right side comes down with the left hip into the impact zone. So people often say, where should my body be or where should the club be? And my solution is just to actually connect the two. What I'm going to do here is actually attach the shaft and the grip to my left hip and put my right hand onto the club. Stand in the set of position of the ball and test the rotational movement. See where my body is. This is the ideal connection. We know things are connected when they actually are connected. So. The right side grabs the club, the left side connects to the hip, and we see through rotation where exactly the hip is in relationship to the right side, and that's basically what happens in a golf shot. Right side to left hip. Before we touched on the drill of the right hand and the left hip, rotating into the golf shot. Once we feel the connection, what we want to do is then break away from the connection, still maintaining it, however. So what I'm going to do is set up to the golf ball with the right side. I still want to feel like there's connection between the right side and the left hip. What I'm actually going to do is strike the golf ball in a full swing with only the right hand. 
So what I'm gonna do is place my left hand behind my back, actually perform a golf swing with the right side. Now, if the ball flight is straight, straight meaning no movement from left to right or right to left, you know that in the impact zone the club was square. So again, we're focusing on the timing of the right side and the left hip, but we're doing it with just the right hand. Afterwards, when we add the second hand to the golf swing, we are going to see a much better connection if the right side is emphasized first. And last but not least, what we want to do is focus on the impact position. We talked earlier about the right side and the left hip connecting. That's very important. Once we get that part down, what we want to think about is impact. At impact, what we do is we shift again from back to front. So from the back, we turn the left hip into the golf shot, bracing firmly on the left side, and here's where we are at impact. Again, right from here, we transfer back, the left hip unwinds, holding the angle, and from here, we make impact right here. This is a perfect impact position. And from this point, if we spend some time here and just feel what we're doing and perform a swing right just from here, the more time we spend in this position, the better off we're going to be and the more familiar we're going to be with it. Okay? Now I promise you, if you spend some time in this position, just hitting some small shots, you'll get there a lot easier. These are the three main drills I would spend my time focusing on. I'd throw all the other ones out the window, work on a connection of the right side and the left hip in a connection form, in a swing form, and then an impact position. Lastly, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually pick on the way people practice. People go to the driving range, and from what I can see, they grab a bucket of balls from the local driving range, they put it down, they pick a target, they pick a club. And what they do then is then push the ball out, take a swing, keep the same club in their hand, and actually hit the same club shot after shot. It's not uncommon at the range to see somebody use 15 to 27 irons in a row, then 15 to 20 drivers in a row. And my problem with that is, is when does that ever happen on the golf course? So what I like to do is I like to rotate my clubs on the practice range and actually play one of my favorite golf courses in my head. So at home, guys, take your own favorite golf course at home. Grab a club that you lead off with on the first tee, such as a driver. Hit a driver, okay, now let's wait two minutes between that shot and the next. Because what happens on the golf course is we get back in the golf cart or we grab our bag or we talk to our caddy. There's two, two, three minutes to pass before the next shot. Okay, so what I'm trying to emphasize is realistic practice. We're going to go from the driver to the iron to the wedge with a good two minutes in between each shot. And what's going to happen there is we're going to get more realistic practice of what actually happens on the golf course as opposed to getting into a rhythm just hitting the same club over and over and over again. This is why people on the driving range say, you know what, I'm hitting the ball well, I'm very excited about tomorrow's round. They've just hit 15 seven irons in a row and they've gotten into a rhythm, they've gotten into a flow. Golf course play is about getting good shots when you're not in a flow. Driver, we have five minutes to wait for the group in front of us to finish the hole. We go to the seven iron, we go to the wedge, we let two minutes, three minutes, one minute go by between each club. That's the test of the true golfer. Thank you for joining us for Golf Made Simpler Than Simple. This video was designed to touch on some basic concepts that will take some strokes off your game. At Mount Freedom Golf, we teach the player not to be bullied by the difficulties of the golf course and find scoring solutions. I am your host, Matt Tao. May you hit the golf ball long and straight and not too often. Be sure to visit our website at www.mtventuresllc.com and look for the next video, The Secrets of the Advanced Golfer.